Welcome to Burning Eyes Tech guys. Today's topic is going to be Teams Admirals. So in today's lesson we're going to be covering the various kinds of admirals we actually get because there's more than just one, there's five to be precise, and also how or where do we actually go and configure these Teams roles. Regarding to these Teams Admirals, as we've just said, there's more than one, there's five to be precise, at least there was when I made this video. It's worth noting that there may or may not be more by the time you watch this video, depending on when you actually watch it. Microsoft does have a reputation of adding more and more admin roles as we go along. So at the point in time when I made this video, which was in May 2021, there was five Teams admin roles. The main one is the top one being the Teams administrator. And as you work your way down this list, they've got less and less privilege. Specifically, the second, the third, and the fourth one. Just less and less and less privilege. The fifth one is a bit of an odd one out, which is specifically just to go and manage devices, who can go and connect, monitor their health, do a remote start, that kind of stuff. So it's specifically about devices. So the fifth one doesn't have a lot of privilege. It's a bit of an odd one out. But the second, the third, and the fourth one just has less and less and less privilege. It's basically all it is. So when it comes to where I can go and configure these roles, there's actually three places you can go and configure the Teams admin roles. You can go and do it via the Microsoft 365's admin portal, the portal, the main one, because you get many portals. There's also a Teams admin portal, but that's not where you're going to go and do it. You need to go to the Microsoft 365 admin portal, the main one, not the Teams admin portal. Alternatively, you can also go to the Azure Active Directory. Or lastly, you can go and do this via PowerShell if you know scripting. So I think let's jump in and show you guys the 365 admin portal method and then also the Azure Active Directory method. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm currently on the Microsoft 365 admin center. What I want you to do is when you get to the center, go to users on the left hand side, expand it, go to active users. And depending on your environment, you may or may not see a lot of users here right now at this point in time. I've got a lot of fake people here at the bottom, as you can see. Now, when it comes to Teams admin roles, when you create a user, you do have the ability to go and assign some sort of Teams admin privilege or any other admin privilege at that point in time if you want to. I did cover that in a previous episode. I think it was creating user accounts and assigning permissions. Or you can go take an existing person, an existing user, and go and add more privilege, remove privilege, change privilege. So I think let's first show you that you can go and add it to an existing person. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on Alex. As soon as you click on Alex, it's going to open a little wizard on the right hand side. In this little wizard, you want to scroll down. I go, well, in my case, I don't have to scroll down. Look for the section that it's called roles. Now, it might not be necessarily here at the bottom right. It could be on the left. It could be on the right. You can see mine just literally just jumped around now. So just look for the section that says roles, go click on manage roles. Once you get to this section, it might be on user, it might be on admin center, it doesn't matter. The point is this is where you go and do it. So at the moment, my person called Alex has no privilege, none. There is a chance that your particular user that you want to go and do this for might have some admin privilege, but it might just be the wrong privilege. Either way, the way you go and do it and the, the place where you go and do it is you go and scroll down here. Here at first, you'll just see the main admin roles. So if I go and assign, for example, the exchange admin role, this person is going to have full-fledged privilege in exchange, but just exchange. Uh, same goes for SharePoint, same goes for Teams. So there is one Teams admin role. That's the main one, the first one of the five roles that we saw there in that list of mine just a moment ago. If you want to see the more detailed roles, the subcategories, the ones that's got less privilege, so to speak, you're going to have to scroll down a little bit here to a section that says show all by category. Expand that. Scroll down. And you're going to have to go and look for the category that says collaboration, I think. I think I might have lost that. There we go. So you can see it's in this section that says collaboration. So scroll down to collaboration section, and here you'll find that same main Teams admin role we just saw there at the top. There's that role, and there's the four other ones. Now that one is the one that was the odd one out, the one that was listed as number five in my list. So there's the communications admin, which was number second. Um, there's the third one. There's the fourth one I had originally. All right, so you just go and choose the relevant role. 
We'll discuss what they do in a moment, but this is where you can go and do it. One of the ways you can go and do it. Alternatively, if you need to go and assign it to a person that you're creating, just go click on add user. And as soon as you get to, I think it's the second or the third page. So I'm just gonna go and say, burning ice tick, burning ice tick, burning ice tick. I'm gonna obviously blur out the domain for you guys. All right, here you get to sign a license of some kind. I'm just gonna choose a random license here. All right, next. And then here on the third menu, we get to choose roles. So you can see by default, this person, the new person we're creating has no privilege. And if you scroll down, we get to the same menu we saw just a moment ago. So that's also how you can go do it for a new person. Alternatively, you can just go create a new person of zero privilege, and then afterwards just go and add it if you really wanna go and do it that way. Now, in case you're wondering, how do you do this via the Azure portal? I have taken the liberty of opening my Azure portal for you guys as well. All right, so here I am on the Azure portal. Once you get to your Microsoft Azure portal, you can do that by two ways. You can go type in HTTPS portal.azure.com or via the 365 admin center, way at the bottom of the navigation pane, you'll find Azure Active Directory there as well. So once you get to the Azure portal, open your navigation pane. This is your navigation pane. You can do that by clicking at the top left hand side. Just go all the way down the list, look for Azure Active Directory, there we go. All right, once you're in your Azure Active Directory, click on Users. And in the user section of Azure Active Directory, you obviously have the ability to go and create a new user, where you can also go and assign privilege when you're creating the person, just like in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Or you can go and take an existing person. There's Alex again. We saw this person just a moment ago on the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And now you'll notice I'm not there at the moment. I'm on the Microsoft Azure portal. But yet I can do the same thing. So if I go click on Alex, check it out looks slightly different. I can go here to assign roles and I can go and change it. We'll show you in a moment how to go and do it for a new person. So if I scroll down, it's going to look slightly different. Just scroll down until you get to teams. I think it's somewhere towards the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much literally at the bottom. So there you'll find the same five roles, teams administrator, communications administrator, support engineer, support specialist, and the device administrator or devices administrator, as they say. All right, so regarding the various kinds of roles we actually get, we briefly explained some of them earlier. As you can see, the main one is obviously the Teams administrator one. So should you assign someone this role, it's probably gonna be an IT individual, he or she will have basically for the most part full-fledged privilege on the Teams environment. So that person can basically go and do anything in the Teams environment but just the Teams environment. So assuming this person is gonna be on the Teams side, he or she can do just about anything on the Teams side. But if they were to go to any other platform, SharePoint, OneDrive, Exchange, you name it, they will basically be a normal person. All right, so regarding the second role here, Communications Administrator, this is gonna basically be second in command, the second highest privilege account, I would say, if I have to suck it out of my thumb here. This person can go and manage meetings, which includes meeting policies, configurations, and even conference bridges, manage voice, including calling policies and phone number inventory and assignment. This role can still do a lot, even though this person will not be a full admin. This role can, for example, view a user profile page and troubleshoot user call quality, the ability to access, monitor and troubleshoot tenants call quality and reliability. Although I think that last part is actually something that can be done via uh, the communications engineer and the communications analyst or, or specialist as well, especially the, the user profile part. So when it comes to viewing the user profile, that is something you can do with pretty much all of these roles. doesn't matter which one you've got. I think the only one that cannot do that is the devices administrator. But the teams administrator, communications administrator, the engineer, the specialist, all four of those have the ability to go and view a user's profile. I think the specialist one has got the, the least amount of privilege here out of all of these accounts. 
that person will unfortunately only be able to view one user profile at a time and only by specifically searching for such an individual. Um, but still, the person can go and view user profile and go and inspect call quality and go and monitor stuff. So I would say pretty much all of these roles, ignoring the one that says devices. So if we exclude the device administrator account, pretty much all of these accounts have the ability to go and view user profile. They have the ability to go and do call quality, go to go troubleshoot call quality, to go and check it, um, to go and go and monitor stuff, um, to go and check reliability. All of them can go and do that. Now, unfortunately, the specialist one doesn't have all the funky tools to go and do it. They only have basic tools to go and troubleshoot, basic tools for monitoring. The engineer has a little bit more privilege, a little bit better tools. I think they refer to it as advanced tools, where the specialist has basic tools. The engineer has advanced tools to go and do troubleshooting and monitoring and all that when it comes to call quality, reliability, and all of that. So and it all comes down to what kind of privilege do you want to go and give someone? Now, I personally have never actually assigned someone the engineer or the specialist role. I normally assign them the full-fledged role, communications administrator role, or the device administrator role. When it comes to the engineer role or the specialist role, I personally have never needed to assign those roles, but it does not mean you will not need to go and assign those roles. Pretty cool roles, I must say. Anyway, so how do I go and assign a role like this to a new person that I would like to go and create via his reactive directory? Now, that's actually a very simple task. So I'm going to go back here to where it says users. Click on new user. And I think this actually pretty much explains itself. You just type in the person's name. So I'm just going to go type burning ice. Burning ice, burning ice. And I'm going to skip that. And then way here at the bottom, I could have actually just scrolled down now, now that I see this. Here, here you can see the person is by default just a user. If you click there, you get the same menu. So here is where you can go and assign someone some sort of privilege when you create their account. You, you'll notice that this is a lot of tick boxes. It's not radio buttons. If it was a radio button, you could only choose one. The fact that it's a tick box means you can assign someone more than one role. So if this person is going to be doing more than one thing, you can go and assign them all of these roles. Although that's just weird. You might as well just assign the top one, which is pretty much the same as all of those roles combined. So yeah, that's it. Now we know what teams admin roles actually are. We know the different kinds we get, and we know where we can actually go about configuring them. If this video has been informative for you guys, please give the video a like. Please consider subscribing, and stay tuned for episode 6. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you, guys.